Now over the years, I've done lots of photo shoots for shows, for album covers, liner notes, websites, YouTube, and I've learned from my mistakes. And not every image of my face, even the ones I like, is a good headshot. By the end of this video, you'll understand why. I'll take the guesswork out of the process so you can get the best headshot you can. The best. Now you're the best. You're the best. Hi, I'm Scott. You're watching Inside Musicals, the channel for all things musical theatre. Now every actor needs a professional headshot that tells the world we take the work seriously. But a shoot with a pro photographer isn't cheap, so we want to make the most of our time. So we're going to define the three most important principles of a headshot, the conventions we must follow, and then some tips and decisions to be made through each step of the process, from planning, to shooting, to choosing the final image. And most of it's in the planning. The first principle is the best headshot is the one that gets us work. It's not the one that flatters us, it's not the one that pleases our agent or our audience or our mum, my mum, or the one that gets us laid. That's just a bonus. It's the one that speaks to an employer, so a director, a producer, a casting director. That's its primary purpose. It's a professional calling card. Yes, it's a first impression based on our physical appearance, no pressure, but it's also our first opportunity to garner attention. Now you may also use it for publicity, say promoting a show or in the program with your bug, but that's its secondary purpose. And that could be a different image. Say the one that gets just laid. Not that I'm obsessed. Now the second principle sounds obvious, but it's one a lot of people forget, and that is the most important part of a headshot is your face. I know, who'd have thought? We obsess over outfits, background, lighting, hair, and those things are important but they're not more important than the face. And if any of them takes attention away from the face, they don't belong. The director doesn't care that they can see Paris in the background or that you're wearing the latest couture. This is not Instagram. They want to read your features to imagine you in the role that they're casting. And this is the third principle. A headshot is the artist behind the character, the blank slate. So if you do comedy, this might not be the funny photo. Funny is for publicity. If you're a drag artist, this might not be you in full makeup. This might be the you that rocks up to an inspirational talk or gets cast in that breakout role. A headshot can be you at your best, but it shouldn't feel like artifice. But have this conversation with your agent before the photo shoot. And that goes with any of these suggestions. What aspect of your personality do you want to highlight in these images? And should you go for versatility or drill down into a niche? And next time you see a casting agent, ask them how they think you'd be cast might not be what you want to hear, but it might tell you what this image needs to be to get you laid. Get your work. Why do I keep saying that? Because all actors are whores. I only say that because it's funny. And it's only funny because it's true. So what are the conventions of a headshot? Well, let's start with four practical ones. Cropping, colour, currency, and correct aspect ratio. Okay, I tried to make them all see. Let's start with aspect ratio. The standard is still eight by 10, regardless of Instagram or TikTok. Eight by 10 still focuses on the face with a bit of context, but not too much torso. But tell the photographer you want eight by 10, because most cameras shoot natively three by two, six by four. So they'll need to allow space for cropping. Cropping, a couple of years ago, everything was cropped tight to the face, which I felt a little startling and not very flattering. We seem to have eased back out now to maybe mid-chest or at least below the collarbone. Colour. Now years ago, back in my day, I'm old enough to say that now, all headshots were black and white glossy. Now the preference is colour, because it better represents hair tone, skin tone, the you that's going to rock up to a rehearsal or to the job. But if you really want that black and white look, tell the photographer. They may still shoot colour, but they'll need to allow for a different contrast between costume, background and you and currency, whether you've trimmed down, bulked up, aged in, it needs to look like you now. New nose, new hair, new headshot. So how about stylistic conventions? What should it look like? Because we see headshots all around us in brochures, Instagram, ID tags, but an actor's headshot's very specific. There is leeway for interpretation, but let's narrow it down a bit and let's eliminate what it's not. It's not a corporate headshot. When you think of politicians, estate agents, CEOs, they're all kind of bland and interchangeable. It's not about the person, it's about the brand. Some variation of the company image. They're about formality, status, reliability, authority. 
or at least the illusion of those things. But an actor's headshot's tailored to you, your personality, your unique features. It's not as uptight as a corporate headshot, it's not as relaxed as holiday snaps, it's not as cheesy as, say, a high school prom photo. It's not Rolling Stone or Vanity Fair, we're not telling a story. It's not an editorial portrait or character study, so no hands in shot, no props. It's not glamour or boudoir, so not too much flesh, minimal jewellery, no weird positions. It's not an art prize, so don't Citizen Kane the shit out of this thing. No expressionistic lighting techniques, no weird camera angles. Okay, so if it's none of those things, what is it? Well, let's come back to that idea of the artist behind the character. Simple, honest, direct, or at least the illusion of those things. Yes, it can be flattering. Yes, the lighting could be interesting, even dramatic. But it shouldn't be more interesting than the face. Think authenticity, intrigue, life in the eyes that draws us in. And I happen to have a video about using the eyes for stage presence. I'll link it in the description. First thing to do is look through a bunch of headshots with an agent. Which ones work and why? Is it the lighting, the background, the body position, the facial expression? Be super critical and then choose maybe half a dozen that might work for you. And you're not recreating the images. This is just a conversation starter with a photographer to help them help you. Finding photographer. Uh, start with recommendations from your agent, then from other actors. Otherwise, just look for photographers in your area, but look at their work and call them. Tell them you want an actor's headshot, because if they also do weddings, babies, families, you may end up with a very different look. And mention the reference images, because they may want them in advance to set things up. And ask about the fee structure. It could be a fee for the session, and then you pay for each image, or it could be a flat fee for the session with a few images included. And that should mean color correction, cropping, basic retouching. And ask about the rights. A specialist headshot photographer will allow you to use these images for publicity. A wedding photographer may not. So get it in writing. You don't want to end up with photos you can't use. Now, some photographers protect their digital assets because they make their money from physical prints. But ask for a full res digital copy. Because as an actor, that's mainly what you're going to use. And even if you get a print, you'll have to digitize. Cut out a step, make it easy for yourself. And confirm the length of the session. Is it an hour, two hours, half a day? How many setups could you fit in? If you have to cancel a location shoot due to weather, do they have a fallback? And do you lose your deposit? Which brings us to studio versus location, because there are pros and cons to both. And don't assume that location's gonna be easier because it's natural light. The big difference between a professional and amateur photographer is how they control the light. So that could mean flashes, bounce boards, scrims, negative fill. And then you're lugging equipment, costumes, makeup, contending with the weather, people, distracting backgrounds. On the upside, natural sunlight reproduces colour beautifully in the right circumstances. In a grassy field, all that green is going to reflect back up onto your skin. In the middle of the day, you're going to be dealing with harsh shadows and you're going to be squinting. So how about shade? Surely that's more flattering, that beautiful, even light. Well, if there's no directionality to it, your features could end up looking dull and lifeless. And then deep shade has quite a blue tint, so any red tones in the skin look muddy, even through makeup. So it's bags under the eyes, blotchiness, spots, uneven skin tone. Of course, the studio doesn't have that natural environment, but then a headshot is not about the context, it's about this. I mean, a studio is generally more flexible, controllable, private. Now, of course, you could do an indoor shoot with natural light, but ask the photographer for their thoughts. So what should we wear? because there's obviously room for personal expression. You're not Cynthia from head office bound by corporate policy, but you are representing yourself professionally, so it should look appropriate. So two rules, it should be simple and show you to advantage. Now simple doesn't have to be boring, it just means it shouldn't compete with the face. That's our second principle from earlier. Okay, tips, try on every outfit in the mirror before the session. Now it's not a fashion parade, it's about what looks good, what makes you feel good and whether it works in this frame. Because something that looks great full length might not work in this context. Bring at least half a dozen outfits in different shades. I know that sounds like overkill, but once you see it under lights against a background, some are just gonna work better than others. No logos, no images. I mean, a tiny one's probably fine, but you're not advertising a company here. And when you reproduce the images, you could be breaching copyright. 
No busy patterns that are going to compete for attention. Instead, think about texture. Subconsciously, the viewer imagines how textures feel and they feel connected to the image. So linens, knits, leather, maybe a blazer rather than a suit jacket. Or layering, as long as it doesn't swamp you. No bright, garish colours that are going to reflect back up onto your face. You might love that lime green top. You might not love lime green skin. Now, if you have a ruddy complexion or fair skin like me, red is not your friend. Now, if you want to play safe, think muted colours, neutrals, naturals. But steer clear of pure white, which can blow out under lights. Better to expose the image for the face than the outfit. And remember, this is your professional calling card. A t-shirt might be for you, but it might also be underdressed. So if you want casual, maybe think about a polo. It's relaxed, but more structure, better lines. And instead of cutting off the neck, it opens to the face. Kind of leading lines a bit like a jacket, but less formal. Makeup, number one rule. We need to notice you before we notice the makeup. So think daytime rather than red carpet. Now, anything too fashion forward will either date quickly or show you as fashion tragic. So simple. Simple is always best. Now, if you're a guy who doesn't want to wear makeup, you should at least bring a blurring primer or translucent powder. We don't want to be completely matte, but we do want to tone down any reflections from lights. And we use a translucent powder, because unlike a coloured powder or powder foundation, it won't build up colour each time we reapply. Now, if you don't wear makeup because you're not sure what to do with it, leave me a comment and I'll do a tutorial on a natural makeup look. Now, essential items. On the day of the session, give yourself a checklist. Costume, check. Makeup, check. Reference images, check. Lint roller, did you forget the lint roller? We don't want crud on our costume. Ask them if they have an iron. If they don't, bring one, bring a steamer, or better yet, choose a different outfit. A hand mirror. Now, they may have a large mirror there for makeup and hair, but throughout the session, you need to check for crooked collars, ties, lipstick on your teeth, lipstick bleed, um, eye boogers, stray hairs. So keep it on you and check often. There's another use for a hand mirror, and we'll get to that shortly. And a toothbrush. We don't want to see your lunch in your teeth. Plus, that double is a really handy eyebrow groomer. Well, oh, that's disgusting. Who would do such a thing? Eye drops. It doesn't take long for eyes to get irritated under lights. Makeup remover. Do a few test shots. Test the images in camera. You might want to adjust the makeup. Or you might want to freshen it up at some point. Sometimes it's just better to start from scratch. Which brings us to the session. Don't assume the photographer knows what you want unless you communicate it. At the same time, don't micromanage. This is a two-way conversation. Ask them how they like to work. Some will coach you through the whole session. Others will just observe and expect you to do your own thing. So if you're going to need some guidance, let them know. Ask them what you can reasonably achieve in the session. Is there time for multiple setups? Do you want, say, um, headshots and supporting images? Say something full length or character oriented? How are you going to prioritise the time? And assume everything's going to take longer than you think. Discuss the reference images, lighting, background, costume, and make a plan. Lighting is a huge part of how we interpret an image, and here's where you can learn from my mistakes. And this is back in the days of film, way before digital, so no previews. The first time I see the image is when I pick up the proof sheet. Now, the studio was bright, but the flash was even brighter, so the images look nothing like I saw in the room. It's front lit with diffused light. Almost no shadows, so it's flattering to the skin, but also obliterates most of my features. My pale skin is practically ghost-like against the dark background. My agent hated it. She said it was too much like a fashion shoot and softened the face too much. So a very expensive two weeks later, another shoot, another photographer. This time I'm lit from an angle. There's more depth to my features. There's some drama to the light, but the face looks more natural. It's only two weeks later, same hairstyle, but what looked like bleached blonde in the previous setup looks completely different here. And had I used reference images, I might have got it right the first time. Now, in terms of contrast, deep shadows are fine for a portrait, but not for a headshot. We need to see all your features. So as the photographer sets up the lights, grab that little hand mirror and make sure it's going to work for your face. And then check how it looks in camera, because it might be quite different. Now, if their job is to set up the light, your job is to find it. Most lighting looks best within a limited range of movement. So once again, grab that hand mirror, put it between you and the lens to find the limits. Now, posing's not about moving every which way and hoping something hits, so we can be strategic. Let's break it into two parts. Finding the optimal body position 
and then finding the expression. Treat them as two separate steps. Step one, general body position. Now in a mug shot, you either stand straight on or in profile. Don't ask me how I know. But in a headshot, most people look like a lump straight on because the cropping cuts us off. So angling the shoulders just a little can fit more into the frame, but also gives more depth to the image. Now sitting down can be a great way to keep you in one position. Just make sure you don't slump in the back and the neck, otherwise you look weak and low energy. Now this is a portrait. This is a headshot, because eyes should always be looking at camera. Now, if your head is front on the camera, we only see the front of the face, but just by angling slightly, we see more of the features, more depth, more jaw, more flattering, but it should only be slight. Otherwise, we're back into portrait territory. Now, if the camera's very close, you could end up looking cross-eyed, in which case, look through the camera. Otherwise, look directly into the lens, not above, not to the side. The nose shouldn't be too high or you look snooty, so keep that angle in check. And don't angle the neck too much or you look coy and submissive. And don't clench the jaw. Eventually the lips start to tighten and you just look uptight and tense. A better approach is to release the jaw with the lips and teeth just slightly apart. You'll look more relaxed, it can lengthen the face and it can accentuate the line of the jaw. If you really want that clenched look, put something soft between your teeth so your mouth is still a little bit open. You want to minimise a double chin? Push the back and middle of the tongue up to the hard palate, as though you're swallowing or saying the word mm. You want to slenderise the neck? Reach the head slightly toward the camera. Now in a 2D image, you don't really notice the stretch, but it can be slimming. Not that you need it, of course. Whenever you get a moment through the session, stretch the face, neck, shoulders to release any tension. Step two, facial expression. And this is where most of us struggle, because holding an expression too long looks fake real quick. So the solution is, don't hold the expression. If you found a good body position, keep that stationary, and then move the head back and forth into a final position. It doesn't have to be big movements, but tell the photographer what you're doing and keep it slow enough that they can catch the moment. Now for a range of expression, be strategic. Start with just a simple look. And each time you look back to camera, warm it up towards that smile or whatever expression you're after. But it shouldn't be too cheesy. I mean, this image is probably borderline for a headshot, but it's one of the few photos of me smiling that I actually like. Now, if you keep missing that final head position, keep the head in place with the neck relaxed and just move the eyes and the features. You just want to keep the face alive and keep breathing. Now, for a slightly different approach, try breathing in as though you're about to speak. Subconsciously, we often tune into somebody who's about to talk. But if you end up with weird mouth positions, <laughs> try a different approach. Once you feel like you've got that shot, change body position or change the lighting setup or costume or background, and then start the process again. The important thing is to keep the eyes alive, and that's where keeping the face or body in motion really helps. Now, early in the video, I spoke about the pressure of choosing that one image to rule them all, that one moment in time. And here's where we can take some of the pressure off. Because yes, when people visit your agent's website, there's that one main image. But when it's your agent initiating contact, they can choose a different image that's gonna be right for that job. The smart one, the funny one, the slutty one, the scary one. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your images. Because it can be hard to chase a photographer down years later, if you remember who they are, and if they keep your images on file. Trust me, I've been there. Now most of us are not good at choosing our own headshot. Subconsciously, we're wired to some version of, do I look hot in this? Well, what we need is the one that gets us laid. Work, gets us work, the one that gets us work. So run them by your agent, your mum, the photographer, friends, colleagues, anyone. But don't just ask them which one they like, ask them what they see. Ask them how they read each one. Because each one's a micro expression and they can read very differently, even with the same outfit, body position, lighting setup. And these could be your alternatives to the main image. What are your tips for headshots? Do you have any horror stories? Should I do a tutorial on how to take your own headshots? Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. This has been a lot of talk. I really do love you. Get out there and be brilliant.